I want to get started this week. Um, you know, yesterday was a uh, was was the birthday of one of my dear friends, and 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 I think we all who have been in the music industry, been lovers of music, been part of the culture for many years, we're still affected by the loss of the late great Andre Harrell. So I got to start this week off by just shouting out um, Andre. Andre was not only just a dear friend, but he was a mentor. If anybody had the opportunity to be around him and get to know him, he was a mentor to all. He was a visionary. He was the man behind, you know, that that iconic Uptown logo, Uptown Records. You know, everybody from Mary J. Blige, Heavy D and the Boys, Jodeci, Father MC, and of course, Puff Daddy. You got to give it up to my man, Andre Harrell. And, and, you know, although he's not with us, he's with us. And even as I was thinking about Andre on yesterday, because he's been passed now for going on a year, if it's not been a year already and we're celebrating his birthday with him with him not here Andre passed at 59 years old and that's really 59 years young but when I was thinking about all that Andre had accomplished in his life like Andre really helped to change the culture not just music culture but culture culture like how we really use our vernacular and our slang to to you know just impact middle america andre is behind some of the most like like iconic sayings like ghetto fabulous and and black excellence these are coined, um terms that he coined that he made famous and when i think of him and how he lived his life and all that he put into his life in such a young age i know i'm speaking to movers right now and many of you if you have not hit your goals and hit your dreams you're chasing your goals and you're chasing your dreams and it doesn't matter how young or how old you are we don't know when god is going to call us home so the goal is is to live and to take advantage of every single day as much as humanly possible get as much out of every waking second as you possibly can because you don't know when it's over and I truly believe that we as individuals, we can do what we can do. But then there's something that God has to do. It's something that the universe has to do. It's something that whoever you pray to, whatever you believe in, it has to take form. I believe that one part is work, absolutely, but there's another part that's just unexplainable. It's divine. And I wasn't always like this. I was brought up by a man who I respect immensely. He was probably the most important male factor ever in my life, which is my grandfather. And I had the opportunity when my mother moved down south when I was in high school, I went to live with my grandfather. And just to give you guys some perspective, my grandfather, this was a man's man. Wasn't nothing soft about this dude. My grandfather, as great as a human being as he was, he was, if you didn't know him, you'd think of him as stern. If he said it, he meant it. If he told you it was going, he was going to do something, he did it. His word was 100% his bond. And I remember as I started to get older and, you know, I'm starting to have dreams of my own and I'm still living under his roof and I'm like, yo, you know what? I want to go out there and I want to chase this thing called the music industry. I want to go and get my feet wet and chase my dream. Now, granted, this was my dream. It wasn't his dream. I know what I saw, but he didn't see it, nor should he have seen it. It was Sean's dream. And I remember coming in night overnight, day after day, working for free during the day. At night, I'm out promoting my parties. My grandfather being a man of the cross, being a pastor of our church, he was like, yo boy, I can't have this in here. It's okay if you wanna chase your dream, but you can't do it under my roof. But for Sean, 
as uncomfortable as that living situation started to be, I didn't want to leave it because it was familiar. I could go out. I could work for free doing internships during the day. I can hustle and do what I was doing in the parties at night. It was a good situation. I had three hots and a cot and a bed to sleep on. So I was good. Meals was there. But my grandfather, every time he would come out of his room, my room was right next door to his. And he would look in my room and start to tell me, it's time for you to go, boy. It's time for you to go. Now, it went from it's time for you to go to you got six months. And I'm like, huh? So at first, I didn't take this man serious. Now, I don't know what was on Sean's mind because like I said, if he said it, he meant it. So every day, he would knock on my door and you got five months. Now, as much as I respect and I love my grandfather, the man didn't graduate high school. So I know he's a wise old man, but I don't know if in terms of book smart, like it seemed like that math was off. And I used to be like, yo, Gramps, like the math ain't adding up. Like it's more than 15 days in a month. Like 15 days ago, you told me I had six months to get up out of here. But eventually, it seemed like four months since the day he told me. Now, he told me I had six months. Four months later, he's like, you got to go. And finally, when the day came that he kicked me out that house, when I tell you I left with nothing, I left with nothing. I mean, no plates, no silverware. I didn't even have toilet paper. I had to figure it out for myself. And when I got out there on my own, it turned out to be a blessing because yes, where I was, it was familiar. It was uncomfortable as a mother, but it was familiar to me. And I knew that while I was there, I had a roof over my head. But when I was out there on my own, I had to go hard. I had to make a decision showing how bad do you want this? Are you willing to grind it out till you get it? Are you willing to go balls to a wall? Like, yes, at one point you was hungry, but are you famished? Are those ribs touching? What are you willing to do for this dream? Now, if I had told my grandfather I was working a nine to five, maybe he can understand that because he was old school. But I never wanted to back down on my dream. And when I got out there, I had to figure it out. Now, at the time that I'm figuring it out, because the most important and impactful man in my life kicked me out, on the other side of the world, the most important and impactful man in Puff Daddy's life was kicking him out. Now, Puff was walking around the music industry. He was established. I was trying to get in. And... He had executive produced Mary J. Blige, had executive produced um, Jodeci. He was walking around that office like it was his. He's yelling at artists. He's yelling at staff. He's coming into work when he wanted to come in. And Andre is like, that's my logo. That's my name on the door. This is still my house. And eventually he fired Puff. Now Puff got to run around the industry where he was just the talk of the town, one of the biggest young executives in the game, and he just got fired. But this is how divine God works. When Puff got fired, another record executive, another legend in the industry, Mr. Clive Davis, a word? Puff's on the open market? I don't want him to come work for me. I see that man. He's got the golden touch. Let me give him a record deal. Let me give him a record label. And that was the birth of Bad Boy Records. So when Bad Boy Records was being birthed, Puff doesn't have a huge budget. He needs free or very, very low cost workers to work for him. In walks Sean Press. Now, small office, 
working next to a future icon in the business, he needs me as much as I need him. And the rest for me is history. That's where my life changed. And I'm telling you guys this story for a reason. So stay with me for a second. If Puff didn't show his behind, get big headed, when I was taking all of those internships, getting turned down, turned down, turned down, nothing happening, got kicked out of my house. If he didn't show his butt, if he didn't walk around with that swelled head, he would have never got fired. If Andre didn't get sick of this nigga acting like it was his logo on the door, acting like he could do what he want because he had a little bit of success under my roof, Andre would have never fired him. If my grandfather didn't get tired of my mess, me coming in that house after him telling me after a certain hour, the lock is going on his door. You got to figure it out out there. If he didn't get tired of me coming in and defying him while he is out there preaching and telling people what they need to do to save their souls and I'm going the complete opposite way and kicking me out. When that web came all together, it worked for the betterment of myself, of Puff, of Dre, and Grandpa. But I'm telling y'all this because some of y'all are holding on. Some of y'all don't want to let go. It is something right now that you're doing and holding like this to, and you're blocking your own blessings. Now, in my case, I was holding on for dear life because I didn't want to get out there and start real life. And that's when God had to lift these fingers up and say, get out. I got something better for you. But some of y'all are in a situation and you're justifying the fact that I need this job. I need this situation. I need this man. I need this woman. And you're miserable. And Whatever you do to try to better your situation, nothing is getting better. It ain't happening for you. But the truth of the matter is you got to let go. Sometimes things just run their course. Puff was at Uptown Records. He wasn't supposed to stay there. That was just a stepping stone to give him the experiment the experience and the tools that he needed to create this iconic Bad Boy Records. All that I was doing was just a stepping stone to get me to that point so I could be in that same house with him and work my way from the bottom to VP. Sometimes you got to be willing to let go and just trust God movers. I hate to be the one to come on and preach and preach and preach. This thing is bigger than me. It's bigger than y'all. And I know some of y'all, you're working hard and you're doing everything you can possibly do for success, but it ain't coming together. And the reason it ain't coming together, because you're not doing that one last piece, which is just let go. Let go and let God trust the fact that he won't bring you this far to let you down. He just won't do it. I'm living proof of it. Sometimes... Even if you don't put that notice in in writing, mentally, you got to say to yourself, on this day, I'm out. When this day comes up, they are going to get my resignation. Sometimes you are trapped in a bad relationship. You got to, if you're not willing to do it today, start putting your ducks in a row and say to yourself, on this day, I am giving this guy or this girl my resignation. I done done all I can do here. As much as I loved you in the moment, you was just a stepping stone for me to get to that real love, for me to get to that destination that I always wanted to get to. Trust in the fact that there are bigger entities that are at work on your behalf. There are things going on that I can't explain, that other people can't explain, but I can bet you if you sat down with Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, any of these millionaires 
and billionaire men out there and women, they would tell you I did what I could do. But then there was just this divinity. It was something divine that happened that took what I was doing and matched it with what somebody else was doing and my whole life changed. So movers, no matter where you're at or what you're doing, I am one for living. I don't know how long we gonna be here. I don't know how many breaths you got left in your body or how many breaths I got left in my body. But truth of the matter is, so long as we're here, work hard, outwork your competition, do your part, but then you have to just let go. You gotta let go and let God do what he does. And that's where your blessings are going to come to pass. So shout to all my movers. I love y'all. Thanks for sitting in on this um, Monday night motivation. God willing, I said something that touched somebody or gave somebody just the encouragement and the strength. You know what you're supposed to do. But sometimes you just need somebody to just say it, to validate that, that feeling that you're feeling in here. It's real. It's not by accident. You know when you have just worn out your welcome wherever you're at. Or they worn out their welcome with you. Don't be afraid to let it go. Let it go. Trust and believe in you and trust and believe in that God that you pray to. So peace and love movers.